Hey guys, on today's episode of The Virtual GM, I'm flying solo and we are talking about five proven strategies to keep guests coming back. Stay tuned for this one. You want to get all five tips. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Virtual GM Podcast. And it's me again, Spencer. I'm flying solo. Cody is out. We fired him. Just kidding. Cody is out on a little nonprofit mission that we support. It's actually a really cool charity. It's called Cars for Kids. Cars for Kids is an organization that goes to benefit terminally ill or very ill children who are staying at the Ronald McDonald House in Salt Lake City. And they go on a car rally, and the rally ends with an uh, a donated auction. So like a great example, a previous client of ours, Sointula Lodge, donated a fishing trip. That fishing trip is worth... Man, it's it's excellent publicity for them. So on the flip side, they actually got some amazing publicity for from it. But uh, that fishing trip can be auctioned for twenty to thirty k. But that twenty to thirty k goes to benefiting the children, and they they buy toys, and then they also donate it to the foundation and these families. But these children can go and, and pick out a toy in a, a the Cars for Kids Miracle Room, and it's really important that they get these toys because because of their medications and uh, anything that they might be around. They're not allowed to share uh, toys or really physical items with the other children. And so we want like high-end nice stuff for them. And so being part of that is a a really big deal for Vibrant. And so Cody and Breck are out. Uh, They are making their way to Aspen, Colorado to start that. And their car rally ends at one of our properties, which is Cougar Ridge in Torrey, Utah. You guys should check that out. Um, if you are new to the podcast, welcome. If you are a groupie, excited to have you along. Um, as you know, we kick off every episode with a segue. That segue is brought to you by EOS, which is Entrepreneurial Operating System. Shout out to Craig Andrews, who is our implementer, who has guided us through that. If you guys are interested in working with Craig, check him out a few episodes back. I put his website in those show notes, or you can just Google him, followed by EOS, Craig Andrews, EOS. He is the man. Uh, so a segue is a personal and a business win. So personal, uh, I had an amazing weekend. Um, I go to a CrossFit gym here in town and I got a couple buddies together and we did a beer night. And instead of aging wine, they age beer. And uh, I had only heard about this like two years ago. So I started doing it and I cellared some stouts. And so I finally was able to bust those things open. This is the best thing you can do, by the way. Go to your local liquor store. Go buy a dragon's milk stout and stick that thing away in a dark pantry for 18 months and it'll taste like the greatest thing you've ever consumed in your entire life. Not a joke. And that bottle is like $11. Great investment. So we did that and we had some amazing stouts from Treehouse Brewery in uh, Boston, Massachusetts uh, and some other really great ones in California. Can't remember the name though. Uh, So that was our personal and then business is kind of hard because we were just in here recording like four days ago, uh, but we got our recording back from our BITAC panel and uh, we're really excited about that. So check that out. That'll be on the audio version of our podcast as well. And we should be publishing to YouTube as soon as we get the video footage. Um, also some exciting news. We can't go into too much detail on this, um, but we should be building out our own WebRest Pro app. Um, again, can't give out too much information on that, but very excited to be working with WebRes Pro in a new capacity. So those are my two wins. All right, let's dig into the depths of this podcast today, the meat and potatoes of this. Um, we have kind of changed up. Again, if you're a groupie, you're probably familiar to a little bit of banter. Today, I want to go over the five proven strategies to keep guests coming back to your hotel. Uh, now, Cody and Breck are kind of like the behind the scenes, finances, change the revenue, adjust the rate, manage the OTAs. That's the handle. That's the portion of the business that they handle. My team and my side, we handle the client facing. Uh, What does it look like to see your hotel from outside the fishbowl? And that's really hard to know, right? Like it's kind of like you look at yourself in the mirror every day, right? but everyone else looks at you. You'll never actually see your face. It's hard. 
So this is ways that you can kind of look in the mirror and identify if people want to come back and stay at your hotel or not. So if you're not doing these five things, a great self audit, you should be able to implement these inside of a week. They're, they're not that difficult. Okay. So uh, tip number one is create some type of loyalty program. This sounds like it's going to be really hard because of the nature of what we're talking about, right? We're independent hotels. We manage multiple STRs, right? So independent properties have always struggled with this. Now there's some solution providers out there and we've really never had any success with them until our Lord and Savior Stash Rewards descended upon us and gifted us with the greatest hospitality rewards program possible. You guys should all check out stashrewards.com. We are not sponsored by them, by the way. We have just vetted them. We have implemented them at our properties and they work amazing. So here's some quick facts about Stash Rewards. Stash Rewards has over 1 million active users. They're kind of similar to like a Hilton Honors program or a Marriott Bonvoy program. Um, So great example. I'm not going to put up the card, but I have an American Express Hilton Honors credit card. And that's the only thing that I run money through because I want the Hilton points. Like I want to be able to use those points to take my girlfriend on a vacation, right? Like that's why you do that. It, Stash has pretty much done the same thing. They just don't have a credit card. I, I think that would be cool. Uh, Jeff, if you're listening, let's let's get a credit card going for Stash. Uh, but instead of using a credit card to earn points, when you stay at partner properties, you earn points. So like the dwellings is on Stash, bungalows is on Stash, the Canyons Collection, their Stash members, Stash partners. Uh, so when you stay at one of these properties, you earn rewards. As you stay at these affiliated properties, continue to earn stash points. Once you've accumulated enough stash points, similar to like a Hilton Honors program, you can then transition that to a free stay, which is amazing. And it's just another line in the water for you, but the cost is very, very negligible. What's nice about this is that this audience of stash members are known travelers. So it's a very safe OTA to be part of because everyone on the city block or the apartment building or the condominium complex that you live in, they have all booked on Expedia and booking.com. And we already know those rates, but stash, these people are seeking that independent property. They want that luxury experience. They want the intimate experience. And so they book directly through stash as an OTA, but the percentage for redemption is very low. I won't say the exact property, but one of our properties, they received $6,000 worth of bookings through stash the cost for that with the hotel paid for those bookings was $158. So everyone will pay $158 for $6,000 in return. It's just an absolute no brainer. So I would recommend, uh, integrating with stash. Um, they have two great reps. I don't, I, they might have more, um, Patrick and Audrey, great guys. Shout out to them. They actually flew out to Utah and visited with Cody Breck and I, towards some properties. And really we were able to make a great impression again, not sponsored. We're pretty agnostic to this type of stuff, but I would highly recommend them. They've got their heads on straight. They're a great company and they, they make us more money, which ultimately is the name of the game. That's why you're listening to this podcast. So that's tip number one, create a loyalty program. Okay. Tip number two is to provide exceptional customer service. That sounds like a no brainer, but here's how you actualize that. There is a man, I've got to Google what the name of this company is. So his name is Brad Anderson. And if you're listening to the audio version of this, I've got my laptop out in front of me, which is the first time we've ever done that. I'm trying to find. I can pull something up as well if you want me to. I I don't hate that idea. I'm on the Brad Anderson blueprint, blueprint creation. Let's see if, uh, can you put that on the screen, Mallory yeah. and Blake? Yeah. See if we can put blueprint creation. So Brad Anderson is a hospitality uh, customer service and tr- uh, sales trainer. He's an absolute legend. What he'll do and what we've had him do, uh, he will mystery shop your hotels and uh, he records the phone call. So he'll call and ask questions that are going to be asked of your front desk staff or whoever's answering the phone. 
every day. Let's see if, if this is pulled up here. If you're watching Blueprint Creation, maybe, uh, what's that? It? Uh, oh, this is like Blueprint. Uh, try Brad Anderson after that. Blueprint Creation, Brad Anderson. There we go. There's this LinkedIn. There we go. Yeah, I think it's that one. Yep. Okay, you can check him out at blueprintcreation.com. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So uh, Blueprint Creation, they will call and ask questions like, I'm looking for availability starting on the 12th. Do you have anything? But he'll never like fully complete the question. So like what he's looking for is whoever answered the phone to say like, how many in your party? How many nights? Things like that. Like the stuff they should be answering. Is it a special occasion? Uh, do they make small talk? Are they are they pleasant to talk to? Uh, and he'll just, he'll mystery shop it. He also asks a really important question. So like once he gets the rate and he's got all those questions answered, he'll ask, is it cheaper if I book it somewhere online? And, and what you don't want your staff to say is that you might find it cheaper on Expedia or booking.com because they're still going to stay with you. They are just going to spend that money somewhere else and you lose 18 to 20% of that money. So you know, the right answer is, of, of course, always no. It's cheaper to book with us. And if you find it somewhere cheaper, we will beat it. That's the right answer for that. So what exceptional exceptional customer service looks like is by providing those experiences, listening to those phone calls. And, and Brad really is a great person to work with. There is a program here in Utah called Custom Fit. You'll have to look into your local area if this is uh, something that's available to you. But Custom Fit pays for 40% of his training. So really like the cost to bring him out is pretty negligible and he'll do a full sales training too. So this is how you upsell someone. This is how you get them to spend money in the pantry or buy something at the spa. This is how you get them to go to the restaurant. This is how you get them to book an activity in the area, right? And he does a really good job at making it so it's digestible and so that someone who's only worked there for a week can take that and apply it an hour after they've been to the training. So I would highly recommend Brad Anderson. He's not the only person out there that's doing this. And again, we're pretty agnostic to this. This is just the guy that we know, and he's done so well that we can't help but recommend him. So it's definitely in your best interest. Of course, there's other things that go along with exceptional customer service, right? Like how fast can you answer a request for an extra towel? Does the, just small things like, does the TV work? Like that ultimately is customer experience. Is your food good, right? That's customer service and experience, but really it's the human interaction, making sure that's good. Um, one thing that I would even do, I'm about to do for a, a property we're looking at is just mystery shopping it. What that means is have your high school friend come and stay, pay him back for the stay or whatever, but just like have someone you trust mystery shopping and, and get some feedback. Look at the grounds. Are there burnt cigarette butts on the ground? Is there trash? Were the people nice to you? Were they on their phone? What was that like, right? So tip number two, provide exceptional customer service. Tip number three, gather and respond to feedback. Um, this sounds laborsome. We've talked about some of this in other podcasts. There's a really great way that you can automate all this. There's a tool. It's about $30 a month. It's called Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com and it integrates with damn near everything inside of hospitality i was actually just toying around in it for a few hours today uh what zapier does is it automates all the menial tasks that you would maybe pay like a night auditor or a front desk clerk to do uh, but it, it simplifies it and a lot of this is done if you have like a, a nice pms system like webrest pro and think reservations do all this also we just need a, uh, another uh PMS program called Muse, M-E-W-S. They're really big in Europe coming over to the U.S. That's a, a squirrel, but it's another great PMS that we're starting to explore. Uh, but if you have a good PMS, some of this is already done for you. Ultimately, what we're looking here for, uh, looking for here is like good trip advisor reviews. So what we do is uh, we have our automation and it sends out pre, during, and post-arrival communication the pre does a really good job of setting like the ground rules and expectations. Again, going back to that customer service during is supposed to be the catch all. So if someone is mad or having a bad experience, you can catch that and fix it. It's also a good opportunity for upsells. And then on the backside, we ask them for a review. So 
if they give us a four or above, we ask for four out of five. And it's just a text. Like we send them, hey, hope your text went great. Let us know on a scale from one to five. How was this? And it doesn't take them to an external link. They can just push like the five button on their keyboard and send it away. So using artificial intelligence, they type a four or a five. We then ask for a TripAdvisor review and we'll send them the TripAdvisor link. But then we give them something in exchange for doing that. So we'll say like, hey, if you do this, we'll give you 15% off your next stay. And then we'll be able to tell if they did that. So again, using artificial intelligence, we'll text them the code. Uh, Or you can even add them to an email segment using Zapier that these people, they get 15% off, right? That's a really easy thing to do too. Uh, But you can use Zapier to automate a lot of this for you if you don't have a PMS that's capable of doing that. So for example, let's say you're using, and I don't know if this PMS is capable of this or not, but let's say you're using Jonas Quorum and uh, a guest leaves. So once you mark someone as checked out, Zapier will be able to read the checkout data and then send a text using uh, a cell phone from their side. So it doesn't come from you like your personal phone or anything. And it will text them on your behalf, that same information. So you can still deploy a lot of these technologies, even without having access to the same systems that we have. Um, I would say it's it's worth biting the bullet on some of this technology. If you're listening to this podcast and have been a groupie of us, and, and especially if you're going to open a hotel, just do it the right way the first time. Um, from a company that manages over 30 properties, it's definitely just worth doing the right way the first time. Um, but tip number three, gather and respond to feedback. Okay, tip number four is personalize the guest experience. Some of the stuff I'll share here is kind of out there, meaning every property that listens to this is not a Waldorf Astoria. You're not Resorts World, right? Like that's the experiences that come to mind when I think about personalizing a stay. But that's probably what most people think of unless an independent hotel has gone the extra mile. (laughs) Jeez. The last time I was flying solo, I actually talked about this a little bit too. the Sweetwater Branch Inn. You know what? Again, we just got back from Florida. Those guys killed it again. So the very first time we went to Florida to visit our new property, Sweetwater Branch Inn, they had put cookies, uh, cupcakes, and a handwritten card that I still have that was like, thank you so much for coming to Sweetwater. We're so excited to work with you. And granted, this was a marketing capacity, right? But they took the time to like write all that down and they put it in each one of our rooms that was October of last year. Fast forward now, it's August of 2023. We talk bi-weekly over Google Meet, but it's almost always business. Cody and I flew out there and these guys were so awesome. They had remembered that I love craft beer. And so they had uh, gone to a local brewery and got, I had just made a, a very passing remark about a specific beer I really liked last time I was there. And they had saved that for me at check-in and they were like nice ice cold. Sorry to cut in, but yep. that is like probably one of the coolest things I've heard. Right. So I'm it's like, that's mind blowing. It's amazing that they yeah. remembered that, right? Like there's no reason that they should have remembered a specific beer that I liked. And it was just as delicious the second time around, I will add. But like, I know that they're doing that stuff for all their other guests too. It's not just me. So just like remember, become friends, talk, hire the right people that are going to go the extra mile and remember that. The investment on that beer was probably like $7, right? Across two cans that I drank immediately upon tre- check-in, no doubt. It was $7, but here I am on a podcast that gets thousands of downloads, thousands of listens, and there are property, but I'm going to tell you a completely unbiased opinion Everyone should go stay there for that exact reason and to go catch a Gators football game too. It's a great location. Now, that doesn't mean you always have to go above and beyond. Like the Waldorf will call you beforehand and say, hello, Spencer, how many people are in your party, right? Uh, Cody stayed there and they set up like a tent with cookies for his, his kids. You don't have to do that. But like if you have something that's personalized that people can respect and, and is personal to them, they're absolutely going to stay with you. A couple episodes ago, we talked about the push for champagne button on the TV. Even that, that's a moneymaker that is personal. People want to drink. They want to have a good time. They want to make a memory. 
And if you can be the facilitator for that, that thing at a, a luxury hotel cleared over a quarter million dollars in revenue just by putting that button in a hotel room. And that absolutely adds to the guest experience. So that's tip number four, personalize or add to the guest experience. Okay. And then tip number five, um, this is kind of where the, the marketing nerd comes out in me. That is to stay in touch after their stay. So today I was working in a technology called Flowdesk, F-L-O-D-E-S-K. Um, Mallory and Blake, can you pull up the pricing for that? I can't remember what it Flow is. Flowdesk? Yeah, Flowdesk. Yep. Okay. F-L-O desk. So Flowdesk is an email marketing tool. And before you think that this is something that you shouldn't listen to, I would highly encourage you to just hear me out on this. I know there's a ton of email marketing programs out there. Flowdesk, in my opinion, having paid for probably 20 plus of these. Hmm. Uh, take the W out of there. And then do.com. Just F-L-O desk.com. There we go. There we go. Okay, so this is a, an email builder and sender. And its pricing is pretty straightforward. If you just go to pricing oh, by that login button. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so check this out. So for email, it's $35 a month. Uh, actually, we click on monthly real quick just so we can get an accurate price. Boom, $38 a month. So here's what's cool about this. For $35 a month, you get unlimited email marketing, unlimited sends, so unlimited subscribers, unlimited segments, workflow automations, embedded pop-ups and hosted forms and detailed analytics. That's 100% true. So the one that I want to focus on is the workflow automations. So here's what's cool. Post checkout, what you can do is you can have Zapier, which is what I mentioned before, take your customer's data and move it into uh, Flowdesk. You can have Flowdesk put that contact into a workflow and that workflow is already built. So you need to take like an hour and build this thing out, but it's a one-time build and you never for, you never have to remember it again. And it's basically a nurturing of your previous guests. So you could just call it like pre past guest nurturing, right? And then just send them periodically. I, I space mine out every month. But you can just periodically send them little reminders. Thanks for your stay. Here's what went well. Here's our promo that's going on right now. And in these situations where they can go out at any time of the year, like if you enroll someone in this workflow in January, if you enroll them in June, you really don't know when that email is going to go out. So you have to have pretty generic promotions. So usually the number that's safe is like 10 to 15% off, but you can put custom data feeds in there. So you can say like, Hey, check out our most recent Instagram post. And assuming that you're doing something right with your Instagram, that data feed will just go automatically into the email. And then you don't have to worry about getting in and making that content from scratch every time. So this is a really great way to automate your outreach targeted to people who have stayed with you instead of just blanketing people at mass, people who have stayed with you, your previous guests and your future guests, because what they don't want is the same offer as the future guests. So for example, if you have a length of stay promo and it's four nights or more for 25% off, what you should be offering to your return guests is two nights for 15% or something like that. They want a better deal because they've already been loyal to you and they're seeking to be loyal to you again. And all of this kind of is a reverse funnel backwards. So if you remember, if we started at the top, if you instill some type of loyalty program, like with Stash, right? So much more of this becomes easier because you already gave them the, the amazing guest experience. It was personalized and you have the loyalty program to back it up and all of your outreach for months afterwards is automated, you've really set yourself up to win. And assuming you can complete this puzzle, this formula, that is five proven ways to have high guest retention at your hotel. Thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. As always, if you have any questions or uh, tips, feel free to email them to me, spencer at thevibrantteam.com. Let's connect on LinkedIn as well. Look me up, Spencer Halford. I have a star next to my name. The other Spencer Halford is a duck hunter in Oklahoma. We don't want anything to do with that man. Uh, send me an email. I would love to connect. Uh, anyone who sends me an email after listening to this podcast, I will send you a free t-shirt. It will have the virtual GM podcast or vibrant on it. Uh, but would love to connect with you as always. Please subscribe, leave us a review, uh, and we will catch you next time on the virtual GM podcast. Thanks guys. Guys, I forgot to shout out Sean Cannell in that episode. Shout out Sean Cannell.